hydro treated vegetable oil the lorry runs on. It warms you up on a cold day anyway. Got a wee party of cows following me this morning. Morning Holly! What a beast! Big breakdown. It's the drill working there. Frosty start to the day today. Helmders are ready for grub. Here we go, swearing. They rub their horns on the hedges and fences, you can see. Worn back a wee bit. A wee layer missing to them. That's them bedded up two, three days maybe. That lasts. Uh, warms you up on a cold day anyway. Give it a couple of hours and they'll flan it all off and level it out a bit, fill in the gaps. It's amazing how this bucket just picks up rust. A wee bit of condensation or moisture and whatnot and it just starts to surface rust. Um, just because this bucket doesn't get used so much this time of year. We're not shifting much grain. Wood chips maybe every two or three weeks. Need to get some wood chips sorted out, so clearing a space to tip them out the trailer, and then I'll get a few loaded up. And then I'll get back to the hens. Well, quite a lot of things to do at the hens. Still. This spot will do for the wood chips, just need to yoke up a trailer, get it coped. Get it here, open up, get that tractor, and one of those trailers. I'll probably empty that trailer because it's got, so it's got an easy sheet cover on it. So it means you have to have a domed part of the back, whereas that's flat at the back. And um, so you can actually fit a wee bit more in there. So if we go again, I'd rather take that trailer because you get a bit more in it. See, I didn't open the door all the way. You flat that on the top from the, the bottom of the door because it wasn't open fully. I wasn't really paying attention, that'll be why. All right, that's the wood chip cabs. Just pack this up, load a bit into the hopper because it's just about empty. It doesn't actually empty, it's, the sides all stay full with chip, but the auger system can't reach that chip. So it's just always full when you just have to fill the middle. Right, that'll do. I'll just leave this tractor yoked up to the trailer because um, I'm not needing it for anything. So. Mice, we bandits, that's why there's expanding foam there, but they dig wee holes and burrow underneath it and try to get up and in. And they manage, they manage the wee bandits. Anyway. All the good poison's getting banned. Um, off the shelf, you can only buy it a fraction of the strength that the um, guys have a license to do it. We get pest control out once a week. Well, at least once a week. It's all going to be trapping soon. Trapping only. Which is a nightmare. There's going to be rodent issues all across the country soon, for sure. Well, within the next few years.
just about finished. Uh, this bucket's getting a bit tight for it now because it's filling up the hopper. But hopefully I should get it over this because the other bucket's got stuff in it. Ian Marston's to be coming soon, today at some point, uh, to drive his digger in, pull the hen shed. Also he's got a bit of drainage to do up in fields up there. I think he's got a big new machine, so big shiny machine we might see. Um, we get quite a lot of drainage done via Ian Marston as well as basically any digger work. Um, Ian Marston did the base of a new shed, does a lot of drainage. Pulls hen sheds, odd jobs when we're burying new wires for the likes of in here or heating into that, things like that. Concrete floors in there, does quite a lot of work for us. We probably would be worthwhile looking into getting a wee digger. Not a huge digger, just a 8, 9, 10 ton maybe. Um, just there's lots of wee odd jobs that need done. And, um, We'd stick with Ian Rust to do the big jobs because he makes a really good job of it, he knows what he's doing. Um, but it'd be more useful for ourselves to get a smaller one just for likes of. Well, there's a job in the field out there, it's a big wet corner, we need to have a, a, a rake about and find out if there's any leaks and then fill it in with gravel and bits like that. There is a lot of odd jobs that a digger would be really handy for. Tractors, we're needing to just bite the bullet and pick one because we, we won't necessarily get it immediately if they've not got it in stock. And if they do, that's all right, but if they don't, if we go with the one that doesn't have it in stock, that'll be at least four months. I'm taking that with a pinch of salt. Job done. Need to go to BQ, pick up bulbs and um, for the hen shed a while back. You've seen a video where. There was quite a lot of bulbs there, and I numbered which ones were needing replaced. Um, way to pick up bulbs. Obviously, this is the right size, but they're not the right bulbs, so nice fancy bulbs. We're just needing some bright LED type um, screw ins, not bayonets. We've got loads of bayonets, but no screw ins the right size. I'll keep the hopper going for a couple of weeks. Shop squad have nabbed uh, the newer forklift, so I'm in the older one. And the door doesn't work, so it's a bit cold. Anyway, Ian Ross is just coming to get his digger going, to get the shed shifted back. Oh, I need, I need something from the other front of the anyway. Um, yeah, we'll get that shifted back in just in 10 minutes. Just getting this beam squared up, so that end needs to line up with this edge of the shed, and the same with that end and that side. Right, beam's in position. Here comes the digger. Just gonna go and check everything's kind of shut and closed before we start shifting it. Breaking, I think. Just a quick heave and I'll be in position. Right, you'll see the shed shifted there. Ran out of storage right at the end of the video. So luckily I just got it. Anyway, shed's back in position. It was frozen to the ground, so I had to go along and work with it. Yeah, loosen it off all along the edges to break it free, but we've got it going. And now we just need to move the wee scratching area, picking up a big heavy chain from in the shed here for the digger to hook onto. So we'll get that shifted. It's a bit of an aggressive manoeuvre, but it's working. The digger on the other end kind of pivoting this shed that way. Easy does it, because this is the far end. I'm getting a bit stuck here. And that's the end that needs the far end of this needs to join onto. See what he's doing. We've drawn I've drawn it back a wee bit so we can fit around. There's a fence up there, so he's got enough room now to pivot. And then that join that that end butts up against that end of the shed. Getting there, he's just gonna hold on, get that closed. He's got a chain on that beam, it bends a wee bit, but it, it does the job. I've done it for about 16 years, so obviously you can't get it completely butt shut, but we'll get it close enough 
we've got a few things to sort out first and then we'll push it at the end of the farm. Just gave a wee push there because obviously as he's uh, out of the gap and he's just drawing round uh, with the pivot the machine he's not got as much force so he needed a wee bit extra but that's us. Right now we need to put the end boards on but seal it all up. There's eight of them to do as well as shifting the scratching area. You can see there's a wee gap there. You need to close that gap. Seal over the roof. There's a ratchet strap which ties down the, the roof cover. So these boards that I've just taken in there, so they fit between the gap, which is that height there, but on this side you can see I'm just putting it in but I need to lift this up a fraction. Lift up a wee bit just to put a bit of pressure on the board when you lay it down again. Drop it down and just put a wee bit of pressure on the board so it doesn't fall out and get pushed out in and out because underneath there will fin fill with hen pen as the birds are dirty because the birds sit about this level and are dirty through the board and it leads a, a big old layer of it so it needs to be able to withstand a bit of pushing. Just grabbing some of my spanners, these are my new ones, not used them yet. Um, I'm not sure what size of bolt I need to take off so I just grabbed everything because the eyes are used at the far away end to drag the shed initially a few weeks ago uh, they come off they're detachable so they take them off so we can attach the scratch area onto the end otherwise they get away that's the brackets been taken off of here it's a bit manky the tools are all manky new ones same on this side that's what they look like attach on that end when we're dragging away Get the boards at this end done, and then we've got a few more things to do. It's sitting fairly level, some years it can end up with a bit of a bow in it, that shed's got more of a bow in it, all the way across it. Although there's the back corner of this one, um, it's running off quite a bit, we might lift it, show some gravel underneath it to level it off, just so when I push it together it, may, it matches up better. And we'll get these done, we need two forklifts for a wee job up there, but there's a load of Wheat going away just any time, so we don't want to bring the other forklift down and get all the tyres all dirty for going in and out the, the shed. You can see the whiteboards in there we've just put in, and then these two sitting out here are for this end bit. It needs to be insulated from the cold so water doesn't freeze. And also, the hens are obviously heated because they're not going to be out in minus conditions. Right, so I'm going to be sure some water down there anyway. Laurie's well, just arrived for wheat that was meant to be yesterday. It's first to feed truck. Um, so let's get the big bucket on, get it loaded up. There's a wee bit less room in here than I was first thinking there was, so I'm just going to load them outside. Because if it reversed in there, I kind of just have a wee bit in there and need it. Ugh, it's not worth it. Just load them outside, it's not far away. Get in there, um, one more in the front, and then another eight in the back. He shuffled forward, so he's wanting some in the back now. HVO. So it's hydro treated vegetable oil the lorry runs on. Derived from like uh, oil seed rape and sunflower oil and things like that. Pretty sure most diesel engines you can just whack that fuel in and it'll, it'll run the water. bucket done just need to do a passport and get rid of a wee dribble which is in here we've only been using that fuel for a couple of months so it's no block filter so far but hmm dubious Filled in the wee book. First load of 2022. My um, handwriting's not the best, but just as well, I don't need it that often. Shut this and away back to the hens. Been a belter of a day. It's been cold, but nice. Thought this nice and shiny. See the base of that engine bay, how it's all rusted? When you see new machines and they're all, they feel all plastic and whatnot, quite good. Because the, the diesel tank on that is obviously a plastic tank and it's black, you power wash it and it's 
like brand new whereas the bits that are metal they chip and paint they start to rust and then the rust just spreads the plastic seems a bit flimsy you can get those nice quality high quality plastics and the the plastic on that gcb is quite good um, and it comes up a lot nicer and lasts a lot longer so i don't actually mind the plastic too much on machines as long as it's well built and solid you get a lot of machines with plastic parts that are flimsy and just want to fall pieces a lot of like power tools uh, they're made with plastic so it's a glass fiber reinforced between like 15 and 40 percent glass fiber reinforced and makes it nice and solid see you look there I mean, it, it, I didn't wash it brilliantly and it's already dirty again, but it comes up nice. Whereas you go around here, you come onto the base of the engine bay here and it's metal and you lose the paint, it starts to chip, rust spots start to show up all around it and it just spreads like wildfire rust does. Once moisture gets under the paint, it's, it's game over really, unless you take it off and respray it. Right, I'm off back down to the hens, that's still down there ladder and light bulbs because I've got a fair few of them to change this valve we me and Kev managed to break a water valve and um, I think it's I think that piece is the air vent release thingy like bobber um, you can it's basically a valve on the end of the water lines so you can release the water if you need to but also lets air get out just sitting a bit low at this end so fill in underneath this end of the shed and I'll bring it up a bit to level everything off because it's kind of this whole end is pivoting a wee bit so the piece at that end is sitting up a bit so it won't mate onto the other part of the shed so well I see up here of all the guttery fields what a mess what a mess bad time of year to be doing this but we can't really choose shed looks good End pieces on, we've pushed that all up, flush, getting there. A lot of other stuff to do, it's getting dark as well, can't see too much anymore. We're getting there, it's, it's Baltic like, cold, it didn't line up perfectly, that much of a difference. An inch, an inch and a half, two inches. Anyway, it's in. It's not a good concept having to move a shed all the time because it's not good for the shed but new light bulbs got a few more to do in the main shed here and then out that door which is the scratching area got some more to do main shed done out here in the scratching area which still needs to be plugged in so these plugs through that hole plug into the other side obviously because it gets detached so instead of dewiring or taking all the wiring out of this shed there's a connection in the middle so it runs the fans, because there's fans on the end as well there, and lights. No. Much brighter in here now. See how long they last. I'm going to try the motors for the feeder, which could be um, a disaster because they've all rusted up, because they've been sitting for quite a while. Struggling. So the feeders are obviously bound up somewhere, so Dad's gonna go and get a bar and you can pry it up a wee bit and kind of give it a bit of a force around the corner to free everything up. So he's going to do that, I'm going to go and change this valve that we broke, so that's how it should look, and that's, this is what we've done to it, snap the top off of it, here's a new one. That's, got here. that's one of the feeders, begrudgingly away, doesn't sound too pretty, but once it shines up again, it'll be away, no bother, but at least it's moving. The other feeder is a lot longer, so it's going to be more of a struggle, I think. Getting this valve off, these bolts didn't actually shear. I thought they were going to shear immediately. I'm just going to get the hammer. Come on. Get it out. Um, also, we've just realised chain's broken here on this feeder. It must have broken just 
some time before uh, the hens went out last. So at least we've found it before we tried to run it. New valve fitted over there. That's just releasing the tension on this. Chains back together, so the next step is we need to actually turn this motor on. And it's just off to give it a whirl. <laughs> it's just pulsing the motor, because if you just leave it on, it'll just snap things. There you go, it's, again, begrudgingly away, but once it runs for a while, it shines up and starts to run smooth. The feeding gives it a, a lot of lubrication because there's oil in the feed as well. Right, we're away with the forklifts. There's the neighbour forklift. Two men having a forklift. So, decent progress today. Uh, we've got a few more things to do. What have we got to do? We have the ramps to build. There's some of the boxes where they lay the eggs. There's four of them, the trays. Um, the kind of frame needs replaced. We've got spares up in the workshop. So four of them to replace. Remat everything, new mats going all round. And then the feeder needs connected. Uh, the water needs connected. Couldn't fit, couldn't get that Toby we've got to work, so we'll go buy a new Toby tomorrow. And um, what else? And that's almost it. Almost. But the birds come the day after tomorrow, so we should. Everything touch wood going fine. Wind up just fine. Bang on the money. They're just very tired. Those sheds. They're they're needing replaced swiftly. Anyway, can't really see me, but cheers for watching. Uh, I'll see you in tomorrow's video. It's you'll be watching us on the fifth. Fifth. It's the fourth today. Coo's like nice and happy in there bedding feeder's empty but that one's full so I'll deal with that in the morning put in for tea